Welcome back to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 7.50 a.m. Father Greg Sackowitz along with Mark Teresi, 312-255-8408, or go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. That was a great first half, Mark. It was. Linda was a tremendous guest. What, what an inspiration, and what a tremendous leader. Yeah, and you know, in many ways a visionary and connecting of uh, clergy, lady, that we're all together, the body of Christ, and we have a great second half hour lined up here on Catholic Chicago. This year's celebration of Mundelein event culminates this evening with a free online presentation of the 2021 celebration of Mundelein. The broadcast will feature the presentation of the As Those Who Serve Award to Bishop Ron Hicks, ordained at Mundelein Seminary, class of 94, who is the Bishop of the Diocese of Joliet. Part of the evening will be musical performances, interviews with Mundelein seminarians, and much, much more. Our guest, Bishop Ron Hicks, Bishop of Joliet, Celebration Mundelein Award winner, and co-chair of the event is with us on the radio, Tanise Paul. Bishop Ron Hicks and Tanise Paul, welcome to the program. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good to good be morning. back with you. Oh, it's great, to, to be here. it's great to have both of you on, two of my favorite people in the world. Well, the thing is, I've never had the pleasure of meeting Tanise, but I've heard wonderful things about Tanise. And, but with Bishop Ron Hicks, uh, Mark, I mean, you may not be aware of it, but when then 18-year-old seminarian Ron Hicks moved in with, his, with the help of his mother and father to Niles College Seminary of Loyola back in August of 1985, I was in my first year on the college faculty along with you, Mark. I yeah. think you came that year. And Ron was one of my seminarians to be in charge of. And uh, Bishop Ron Hicks, we go back 36 years next month. Wow. And that makes you a senior priest, Greg, right? Yeah. In fact, w- the day that uh, we met, uh, Bishop Hicks would have been 18. I was 32. <laughs> And now Bishop Hicks is now 29. Exactly. And I'm 68. And you're 84. You still look only five years older. <laughs> you're right. And also, you're wonderful. You know, please give love to uh, mom and dad and uh, your well, parents, Ron. And yeah, that, thank uh, you for- first of all, congratulations on the award as those who serve award that you'll receive. Now, it was really a two part celebration, which was uh, what, July 9th and again this evening, too. So it, uh, maybe, Tanise, for, for a moment, you can tell us about the award. And um, first of all, Bishop Hicks, such a phenomenal recipient and much, much deserved. So, Tanise, tell us about the award and the history. Well, the award honors um, someone who's extraordinary in giving back um, to the faith and uh, I have to say, you just said it, Father Greg, but there is no one who's more fitting for the award than Bishop Hicks. And I think, you know, this was structured as a two-part event, the live event and the um, virtual event tonight because of COVID. And we didn't know if everything would be opened up. But I think it's serendipity because uh, now more people are going to get exposed to um, the awards presentation and specifically to Bishop Hicks speech, which was just extraordinary and inspiring. And the, the, in addition to Bishop Hicks speech, we'll also hear from um, Father Karchi, from um, Cardinal Supich and from a wonderful deacon <laughs> <laughs> out of Joliet, all of whom gave the most uplifting speeches culminated by by Bishop Hicks' words. And um, so that's the, so tonight I think will be very special. I'm excited to go back to the event again mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> because it was just an extraordinary uh, afternoon and it will be tonight a wonderful evening. Now, a question I have to ask you, Bishop uh, Hicks, and that is, you entered the college seminary back in 85 as an 18-year-old college freshman. But maybe tell us for a moment your story on when you first thought about priesthood and just give us part of that journey. Sure, thank you. It's it's been a wonderful journey of faith and a wonderful journey of the Archdiocese of Chicago and the church just uh, supporting vocations and seminarians and priesthood. I... um, I was encouraged by a parish priest at St. Jude the Apostle in South Holland, where I grew up, 
to uh, consider going to Quigley South as my high school back in uh, 1981. And I went and, uh, and, and I don't think I really at that point was thinking of priesthood, but I was supported and asked to consider the possibility and surrounded by people, priests, laity, teachers, fellow classmates who, um, who, who thought this idea of priesthood, of considering it was, was something good, something worthwhile to consider in your life. So I, I did. And then I took the next step and went on to Niles College. It's where I met you and where I met Mark Tracy. And uh, again... And you, you stayed the, in spite of us. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh that could be a, that could be a great tee up, but I, I'll give you <laughs> uh, and you know it, it was a phenomenal education, and we were also formed to uh, to serve God in the church and to to see really what what a worthwhile calling the priesthood is, and so because of Niles College, I heard God's voice saying priesthood is what I'm calling you to. But as you know, Greg, I, Father Greg, I took a, a year off before I entered Mundelein Seminary mm. after graduating from Niles College. And the reason I took that year off is because I, I knew if I was going to be a priest in Chicago, I should really try to learn Spanish well. And, and at that point, I hadn't learned Spanish. And um, so I, I took a year off. I went to a home for caring orphaned and abandoned children called Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, our little brothers and sisters. I volunteered for a year, learned Spanish, but also saw faith in action. I saw the Catholic Church at work with all, all the great things that we do in the name of the Lord and together at that mission in, uh, in Mexico. So I came back, entered Mundelein Seminary, and, and from that moment, I knew God was calling me. You know, you have good days and you have bad mm -hmm. days, but... I was excited to receive the formation, to be developed, and to take the next steps to ordination. So I was ordained in 1994. Beautiful. You know, we're going to just take a little break and continue. Uh, yeah, maybe let's do this, um, Brian and uh, Javi. We're going to take. We're going to pass on break. We're going to keep going here. Oh, good. good. Uh, question I have again for you, Bishop Hicks, and that is uh, the orphanage in Mexico. Could we've talked many times for you personally? That was a game life changer. Am I correct? Absolutely. It's um. Again, I was hearing that call to priesthood. What happened when I had a direct contact with um, with, with the poor, and also with the faithful, seeing seeing faith so vibrant and expressed in so many different ways, um. I came back on fire not only for my vocation to priesthood, but also for the the necessity of us being church and the importance of our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Beautiful, beautiful. Tonis, as you heard, you, you gave people a little bit of a tease that on um, Bishop Hicks's talk tonight, but it, it, as you listen to him and you're up at the seminary and um, you're a lay person who's really dedicated tremendous energy to the mission there. Why? Why do you do that? Oh, well, I believe that our parish priests are, you know, it's funny. We're helping by supporting the seminary, helping to form the priests, but it's because the priests, our parish priests, are who form us. Mm. So to me... It, I don't know, uh, you know, a better way to focus my faith than to help our parish priests. I don't, I, I think sometimes we take for granted mm. the journey they go on with us. And when I look at my life and the life of my children and even my my new Catholic husband after 30 years of, hey, of marriage, you know, great. I sit back and say, wow, yes, Mark Tracy, that happened. Yay. It happened, it happened because of our parish priests over time Wonderful. being good as gold Wonderful. and 
That's you know, wonderful. Helping our family move forward in faith. So I, I just could not feel more strongly about that. And um, I, that's why I want more people not only to come out to the seminary. I don't. I actually don't care how pretty the seminary is, and mm-hmm. it is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we want to have people there, but I want people to meet the young seminarians mm-hmm. because they are the future of our faith and they are amazing men i am like blown away by by them so and i want to say one other thing when i met bishop hicks he was the head of formation right so when we say oh, no line. yes okay. Okay. exactly so bishop hicks is the person who says you know here's who's at the center of our life god jesus here's why we're here for others um and cr- also making sure that the knowledge of the faith is there. So I, I just think if we could just clone Bishop Hicks and put his DNA strands out into the Catholic community, <laughs> there's hope. Exactly. I'll second that. Uh, beautiful. Take us to break, Mark. Well, let's on that, on that really enthusiastic um, and really true note. Um, WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago on your dial, 312-255-8408. Or you can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We'll be back with Bishop Hicks and with Tony Paul to talk about that celebration of Bundline Seminary. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. much waiting for you at Catholic Charities Senior Services. We offer programs and services to help make the most of every day. Friendships and fun are guaranteed at our drop-in senior centers. Our adult daycare centers offer enjoyment and greater supervision to seniors who need it while their caregivers get a break. Holy Family Villa provides a beautiful, safe environment for seniors looking for short or long-term residential facility. And we offer assistance with senior benefits, care coordination, congregate and home-delivered meals, hospital transition, and much more. For more than 100 years, we have accompanied seniors through every transition in their lives, and we are here for you now. Catholic Charities is a name and an agency you can trust. Call Senior Services today at 312-655-7700. That's 312-655-7700. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Catholic Chicago, WNDZ, 750 AM on your dial, 312-255-8408. Or you can go to see us live on youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're with Bishop Ron Hicks, the awardee of As Those Who Serve um, from Online Seminary, and Tony Paul, who is co-chair of the event. And Father Greg, you had a question. Ron, a question that is... uh as a seminarian, you moved through the seminary system, ordained at Mundelein, class of 1994. 
if a young man were to approach you today who is considering about exploring the priesthood, what advice or wisdom would you share with him? First and foremost, to answer your question, I'd tell him, consider it. Do it. Don't hesitate. It's uh, When I was the Dean of Formation, I used to tell the seminarians, if you're ever asked to do something for God or for the church, look for ways of saying yes instead of saying no. It just might be the Holy Spirit whispering in your ear. So if, if you, someone has said to you, you might be a good priest, if you've been thinking about that yourself, saying, I might feel like I've been called to priesthood, consider it, talk to someone, explore it. There are so many different ways. Pray about it. And um, I'll tell you, for me, it's been the greatest gift of my life. I would second that in my life, too. And extend that. Um, uh, our prior guest, Linda, Dr. Linda Curry from the Institute up at Mudline, was talking about her call, saying yes. Um, the idea, Greg laughed when you were talking. He was smiling at me because he's asked me to do different things over the course of my life, and I've said no. But then I say yes. It takes a little because while. Because I was persistent. So, well, because sometimes I wouldn't quit. Sometimes you hear it as a call, and sometimes, sometimes you resist the call. You know, until like Ryan, your heart was opened when you went down to work with the poor. Tony, so what about you? You said yes to Mundelein. Uh, did you, did to, you lose a bet? To, <laughs> to, to be very well, involved there. Why did you say yes? Well, um, you remember I didn't say yes at first yeah, there. because I was overwhelmed with my children and my job, mm -hmm. and I, I, and it bothered me for two years. It mm -hmm. made me like literally. I had a, you know, saying no is uncomfortable, but to this was so. I called you back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I called you back and said, "I take it back. I take it back." <laughs> if you still. If you still could use my help. But that was two years later, Tanise. It yeah. was a two years yes. later. It I wasn't at the moment. It, but yeah. It, but it and that's okay. But there, there's an honesty to that, though, too. That's okay. It's, that's all part of discernment. It's, uh, exactly. It's, it's knowing when to finally you know, say yes to the Lord's call if that's what the Lord is asking of us. That's, that's well put. Can I, mean, I ask, Grant, when you took that year off, what, what prompted that for you? The original prompting was simply I, I wanted to learn Spanish. That was and it. I okay. thought having a year intensely with uh, only speaking Spanish and surrounded by that language would be the way to do it. But what I realized was that was the hand of God, not only helping me to learn Spanish, but uh, being in contact with uh, another language, culture, mm -hmm. way of uh, living life, and, and a, a real connection to the poor also in a particular way but uh, that that particular experience it became a family for me it wasn't just me serving poor orphaned and abandoned children it's it's a way of living the gospel of love mm -hmm. uh, being together being a family of God together and again life-changing for yes. me now Ron a question I need to ask you and that is uh, you along with two others were elevated to Bishop back in September I think 2018 and so the last almost three years now has really changed your life. What do you find is the most rewarding aspect and challenging aspect right now of being the Bishop of Joliet? Father Greg, um, when people ask me, what is it like to be the Bishop of Joliet? I, I basically, I say two things. I, I'm a, a proud son of the Archdiocese of Chicago. I, I miss it and I miss the people. But uh, at the same time, this call to the Diocese of Joliet, I just, I wake up every day and in my prayer, I feel both happy and blessed. I feel very blessed to be called here. And, uh, and I'm really trying to put a, a vision forward that together with um, all the priests and clergy and religious and, and laity, that, that together we're focusing on good catechesis and evangelization and from that putting our faith into action you know all the ministries that we do as a church so um and there, there's a there's a good sense of goodwill here and vibrancy and uh and again i'll say it i just feel very happy and blessed to be here well ron you are deeply deeply missed here in the archdiocese of chicago 
but you've been a real gift to the people of Joliet because they love you there. And maybe for a moment, uh, Denise, with the celebration this evening, tell us about it. How can people get involved? How can they contribute? Well, this evening there's a very special uh, matching grant. So first thing is to just come and participate and experience um, the, the messages. I think that's the first thing. I would just say do that no matter what because it, it, you will be enriched by it. What time, by but the way? There, pardon me? 7, Seven. o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then the matching grant is for $100,000. And they've been working hard on uh, taking full advantage of that matching grant. So they're moving their way. The last I, I heard, they had matched up to uh, 35,000, but obviously it would be, um, oh, there you go, mm -hmm. <laughs> raised so far, 37. And you know, we're just hoping to push north on that number because it's an incredible opportunity to get matched. So every dollar you contribute, you're actually contributing to. Now, what was the uh, exact, how do people exactly connect with tonight? Uh, uh, where do they go? They go to the usml.edu website, or is there a special uh, connect for them, a link? Well, the, well, the website. To that. It's, okay. um, if, they go, if they go directly to www.usml.edu.celebrate, They'll, they'll go right to the link that will connect them to the celebration tonight. Give that one more time, Bishop Hicks. Certainly. It's www.usml.edu slash celebrate. Now, it's interesting, uh, I, and Bishop Ron, maybe you know a bit of the history. I remember talking to a priest years ago who went to Mundelein, was ordained for Chicago, opened the Tribune one morning on the front page, he became a priest of Joliet. That's how he didn't even know the, the, that there had been a, 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 a shift in the, the how, diocese how did broke jo off. Yeah, how did Joliet? How did that happen? That Joliet became a diocese because weren't weren't your areas originally connected to the Archdiocese of Chicago? Correct. And as as this area, this part of the country, began to grow with Catholics, like so many other parts of the country you know, dioceses were then split and uh, made into their own dioceses so that it's, um, so that they, they could locally kind of administrate and manage and be a diocese together. That happened in 1948. Okay. So uh, it, I'm actually the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Joliet. Sixth one. Here's a great story. Uh, Father Tom Maher, who was a resident for many years at St. Mary of the Woods, was ordained at Mundelein Seminary in 1947. He was ordained. He was um, assigned the Archdiocese. He had a brother, Father Art Maher, who I think was ordained in 49. But when the diocese broke off between Chicago and Joliet, he had a choice between Joliet or Chicago. So Tom stayed in Chicago, and his brother Art, who just passed away in the last six months, stayed in Joliet and a wonderful priest there. So it, uh, but I can't believe, uh, Bishop Hicks, you are the sixth bishop for Joliet. And then it's interesting because your role, so Bishop Hicks first was a student at Quigley South, then Niles, then Mundelein, then Ordain, then with the Arch, uh, then with the seminary, you were formation director on, at, on the board as a staff person. Now are you on the board as Bishop of Joliet? I, I continue to serve on the board, yes. That's and, interesting. Um, I'm, to grateful, me. I'm grateful to continue to be on that board to, to one, contribute, but also stay connected to uh, the Mundelein spirit and the Mundelein uh, community. And then maybe, Tonis, as you look at the board at Mundelein, which is to me, my years there, it was a, it still is, but a wonderful, wonderful group of faithful folks who were tremendous, brought tremendous wisdom to the place. From a marketing standpoint, which is, part of your expertise. How are we doing in that, in terms of marketing, not only the seminary, but the church? What What's working and what could we be doing? And <laughs> you got a minute? <laughs> yeah, about 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> you know what? I'll use our, our time to say, first of all, I think improving. And I think having um, leaders like Bishop Hicks and Cardinal Supich is doing a fabulous job 
Um, Father Karchi is a voice to be heard, you know, so the more people we have like that who are open and um, given the opportunity to to tell the story, mm -hmm. I think the stronger we're getting. So I do see progress there. I do want to say, Mark, because you put me on the spot, I want to thank you because you you are the person who introduced me into the the seminary family and I could not be more grateful um, and uh, just touched by it because it's really impacted my life in a beautiful way. Well, we so, not, no, we you. need to uh, end, but Mark, thank you for the gift of Tunis from what the diocese. Gift. What a gift. And want to thank in a very special way Bishop Ron Hicks, the Bishop of Joliet, who is a recipient tonight of As Those Who Serve Award Most Deserving. Bishop Hicks is an outstanding, phenomenal priest for 27 years, both now the Archdiocese of Chicago and now the Diocese of Joliet. Also, to uh, thank you to Tunis Paul, who co-chairs the celebration of Mundelein for this evening. So Bishop Hicks and Tunis, thank you for joining us. It's been a great celebration of joy in this program. Thank you to Mark Teresi. Thank oh. you to Javi Garcia, Brian Hockey Hitman Brock. Thanks for joining us to all of you. God bless. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank, thank you. Thank so you, much. everybody. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.